Freeing Orpheus and setting up the revolution against Vlacketh is one of my favorite moments in the finale of Baldur's Gate 3. But what if we betray the savior of the Gith Yankee and doom them to an unending reign of Vlacketh instead? That's what we're going to explore today. In this video, we're going to talk about the most compelling reasons why you should kill Orpheus in Baldur's Gate 3. So buckle up, grab some iced coffee, and let's dive into the astral plane. Most players make choices in RPGs as kind of a self-insert. We make the choices that we personally want to see happen, rather than role-playing as a character with his own motivations and goals. And there's nothing wrong with this, I do this myself, but I also like to analyze RPG decisions from multiple angles and try to play devil's advocate for the bad choices. So what are some reasons why our character might feel justified in betraying Orpheus? Well, for starters, we might believe the Emperor's lies, especially on a first playthrough. The Emperor repeatedly tells us that Orpheus will see us as nothing more than an illithid, beings that he absolutely detests and dedicated his life to eradicating. That would be a terrible idea. The moment he is free, he will attack you. Your only defense would be to kill him, and in so doing, he would doom us both. Freeing Orpheus would just give him the means to destroy us and allow the Netherbrain to take over. And there is a shred of truth to this. Orpheus reacts to the player with disgust and even says we should have been killed by his honor guard during our initial encounter with him at the beginning of Act 3. You reek of illithid. You stole an unborn hatchling from my people. And you slaughtered my honor guard. Nonetheless... It seems we must be allies. You had the opportunity to surrender yourself to my honor guard. They would have given you a noble end. Any worthy individual destined to become Gake would have done so. The only reason he allies himself with us is because he has no choice. The Netherbrain must be stopped, and working with us is his best hope for defeating Neolithids and eventually taking up his fight against Vlacketh once more. Obviously, if we've already played through this part of Baldur's Gate 3, then we know Orpheus won't attack us. And this is the sort of paradox of making decisions in video games. Once we beat a game, it's hard to view our choices through the lens of a first playthrough. In real life, we don't have the benefit of foresight when deciding our course of action. We can learn from past experiences, but we're always making decisions without knowing the future result. But in video games, assuming we're not on a first playthrough, we already know the end result and this will influence our decision. This video is sponsored by Luck Catchers 2, an open world MMO set in a vast universe of magic, dragons, and flying ships. Enjoy complete freedom to shape your journey with unlimited options for character development and skill building. Create industrial empires, live like a pirate, or participate in races and battles against dragons. Luck Catchers 2 is available on Steam, and you can start playing today by clicking on my link in the description. Luck Catchers 2 is an explorer's dream, with a game world over 1 million square kilometers in size, stretching across two great continents and a myriad of archipelagos and islands. You can explore the skies with a diverse choice of ships, conquer territory and mine resources, and build your own settlements to manage and expand trade. Luck Catchers 2 also has a number of exciting events that you can partake in, ranging from large-scale ship battles, dragon fights, and heart-pumping races. I was particularly intrigued by the settlement building mechanics and resource management. Construct and grow a vast city, form alliances, explore to mine rare minerals, and develop trade with other territories. But be prepared to defend yourself from pirates that can set back your civilization. Luck Catchers 2 is available on PC, and now is the perfect time to dive into the experience. Experience. Click on my link in the description to get the game today on Steam. Use code BDG to unlock free in-game items. But in video games, assuming we're not on a first playthrough, we already know the end result and this will influence our decision. A similar scenario can be seen with the Rachni Queen in Mass Effect 1. Freeing the Queen risks the return of a warmongering race that fractured galactic peace a thousand years ago, but killing the Queen leads to the permanent extinction of a sentient race. It's a tough decision. Even though Commander Shepard couldn't possibly know in the moment how his actions would affect the galaxy, the player can. If you've played the series before, you already know how things pan out, so you can make the optimal decision when speaking with the Rachni Queen. So we, the player, know Orpheus won't attack us, and so it may seem like an obvious choice to reject the Emperor and free the comic prince. 
But how could our character possibly know this? They couldn't, and with the fate of the world and their own life hanging in the balance, it is a reasonable choice to side with the Emperor here to trust the devil we know, so to speak. Another reason to betray Orpheus at the end of the game is if we believe in Vlacketh's lies. Vlacketh tells us that Orpheus is a threat to the Githyanki along with the Emperor. If our character doesn't inspect the claims of NPCs like Kithrak Voss critically, we may misplace our trust in Vlacketh, especially if we are Gith ourselves. Githyanki are indoctrinated from birth to worship Vlacketh, their minds poisoned about the true legacy of Gith's only son, Orpheus. And we see this intellectual struggle directly with Lazel. If she is never confronted with conflicting facts or opinions, then Lazel will continue to remain loyal to Vlacketh, even to the point of helping to kill Orpheus at the end of the game. So if our character isn't exposed to this information, they may continue to believe in Vlacketh as well. We can only unlock the option to free Orpheus at the end of the game by striking a deal with Raphael or stealing the hammer from his lair. Think about the insane risks we must take to make freeing Orpheus possible. We're either potentially bargaining with our mortal soul or agreeing to hand over a powerful artifact to a devil. At every other step of the way, we're shown how cutting a deal with the devil is one of the worst possible decisions you could ever make in the Forgotten Realms. The alternate choice is to steal the hammer from Raphael, which at face value sounds even more insane than cutting a deal with the guy. I mean, think about it for a second. We have to perform a dark ritual, open a portal to the hells, and invade a powerful devil's lair to steal a magic hammer capable of breaking Orpheus's chains. If this weren't a video game, it would be completely ludicrous to embark on such a journey. Unless our main character is Githyanki, we really don't have a dog in the race. So why would we stick our necks out to save Orpheus? It's totally unreasonable. For the last few RP justifications, I want to explore some cognitive biases and evil reasons you might want to betray Orpheus. Another reason you might want to betray him is that maybe you're role-playing a character that is biased against the Gith Yankee. Maybe your character has a burning hatred for the Gith and wants to see them steady taken L's. So you seize the opportunity to take out the one leader who could unify and free them from Vlacketh's dictatorial reign. Or maybe you've fallen for the Emperor's charms. Maybe you're a tentacle enjoyer that embraces the Squid Boy. <laughs> I mean, there's got to be some freak out there who's betrayed Orpheus for this exact reason, right? Or maybe you're playing as a dark urge, and you want to lull the Emperor into a false sense of security by siding with him, only to betray him at the last possible moment and seize the crown of Carsus for yourself. Okay, these reasons are getting less compelling as we go on, but you get the idea. At the end of the day, I'm still going to free Orpheus on most of my playthroughs, but it's a fun thought experiment to cook up reasons why we can justify his betrayal instead. So I hope you enjoyed this journey as much as I did. So what do you think is the most compelling reason to betray Orpheus? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to Big Dan Gaming for more BG3 and RPG videos. Big shout out to all the channel members for supporting my content. Until next time, this has been Big Dan. I should go.